In 2007, San Diego, the American Navy was performing an exercise to see how the military ships would do without GPS. Using a device to jam the satellite signal, the Navy accidentally left the whole city without GPS. And it was almost catastrophic. New Scientist magazine wrote that in the tower at the airport, the system for tracking incoming planes was malfunctioning. At the Naval Medical Center, emergency pages used for summoning doctors stopped working. At the harbor, the traffic management system failed. On the streets, people reaching for their cell phones found they had no signal. And bank customers trying to withdraw cash from local ATMs were refused. Today, we will find out how GPS works, how navigation system malfunction can drive ants to massive suicide, why dung beetles dance on ball of poop to escape circles, how to make a compass with your own hands, and how did we survive without the GPS? GPS made its way into many aspects of our lives, but will an accident or a malfunction cause an irreversible or mind-blowing consequences? Most certainly not. It is all very terrifying, but what terrifies me most is that it's fake news. Well, don't get me wrong, Navy did admit jamming GPS signal in San Diego, purely accidental of course, but the outcome wasn't anywhere near catastrophic as the magazine claimed. It will cause some damage, and in a short time everything will go back to normal. We will survive it as we did thousands of years before 1991, when GPS started to operate. In ancient times, the navigation was much more complicated than just opening a map on your phone. Nowadays, we can rarely put a compass in use, let alone to read the landscape, animals and use celestial navigation. This is the price we paid for the evolution of the technological era. Historically, people used to navigate with a combination of tools and skills that are less prevalent today. Written records of navigation using stars, going back to Homer's Odyssey, where Calypso tells Odysseus to keep the bear or some major on his left and at the same time to observe the position of the Pleiades and the Orion as he sailed eastward from the islands to return home. By the 3rd century BC, the Greeks had begun to use the little bear, Usa Minor, to navigate. The pole stars were used to navigate because they didn't disappear below the horizon and could be seen consistently throughout the night. In the 1st century BC, the Anthokythera mechanism was used to predict celestial events, such as the position of the Sun, Moon and planets as well as lunar and solar eclipses for hundreds of years. This was a remarkable device for its time. We can even call it the first computer, but this is a topic for another video. The next big leap in navigation devices was in 11th century China, where the first magnetic compass was developed and applied to navigation. This led masters continue sailing a course when the weather limited visibility of the sky. The true mariner's compass, using a pivoting needle in a dry box, was invented in Europe no later than the 14th century. At this point already, navigators were aware of magnetic deviation, the discrepancy between true north and magnetic north, so they would make some adjustments to compensate. During the late Middle Ages, the compass was a vital navigational tool that significantly influenced maritime exploration. Want to make one for yourself? You just need a needle, a magnet, a piece of cork and a bowl of water. Magnetize the needle by rubbing it along the magnet several times. Put the needle through a cork and float it in the water. The ends of the needle orient north and south. Mark north with a marker. Now you can navigate your way. But if it is too boring for you, you can mimic beetles. Not the beetles, but dunk beetles. They roll their dunk balls while navigating by the stars. They climb to the top of their dunk ball and dance, aligning themselves with the Milky Way. This helps them move in straight lines, avoiding wandering in circles and optimizing their journey. 
The world of animal navigation is captivating blend of instinct, adaptation and ingenious strategies. We still have not fully understood how animals navigate, how birds migrate using Earth's magnetic field generation to generation. Monarch butterflies, for example, embark on multi-generational migrations, each intuitively knowing the route. But sometimes nature's genetic compass breaks down. And when it does, it is horrifying. Look at this ant meal. The phenomenon is observed in a group of army ants separated from the main party. By losing the pheromone trap, they falsely follow one another, forming a continuously rotating circle known as a death spiral. These ants will eventually die of exhaustion. We would suggest using the compass. But despite some unpleasantness, we always look up to nature to find answers. The echolocating ability of bats and dolphins were the inspiration for Leonardo da Vinci himself. In 1490, he found a way to locate vessels by inserting a tube into water and placing an ear to it. And now sonar helps us to map the ocean floor. Ground-based radio navigation is a relatively new invention. Like LORAN, short for Long Range Navigation, or UK's GI, used terrestrial long wave radio transmitters. The master station broadcasts the radio pulse, and the slave stations repeat the pulse. An aircraft or ship picking up the signals measures the time for waves to travel from the master station and each slave station to the receiver, and calculates delays between their receptions. These time measurements help determine the distance from the receiver to each transmitting station. By knowing the distances from the receiver to multiple transmitting stations, the receiver could understand its precise location. These navigation systems were largely in use during World War II, providing accuracy ranges from 10 to few hundred meters, depending on a specific system and technology. As the GPS and other satellite navigation systems are truly remarkable and mind-blowing of sorts, is it worth the credit? Don't get me wrong, I don't doubt the mind-blowingness of sending satellites to orbit and providing the world with accurate time and navigation. Yes, you heard it right, time is also synchronized for the whole planet with the use of GPS. Every satellite has its own inbuilt atomic clock to work like a Swiss watch. And at this point, the world depends on the correct time, like Tom on Jerry. Another groundbreaking navigational system was developed in 1955. INS or Inertial Navigation System. It has somewhat primitive but genius structure, which operates on the principles of inertial motion and accelerometry. The measurements from an accelerometer and a gyroscope help to determine the object's velocity, position and altitude. Accelerometers measure changes in velocity, allowing the system to calculate changes in position. Gyroscopes measure the rate of rotation, providing information about the object's orientation. Fitness trackers and smartwatches integrate INS to accurately track your movements and activities. Many AR apps use smartphone sensors, including inertial sensors, to overlay digital information onto the real world. Same goes for AR and VR devices in general. INS is highly accurate within meters. It is a navigation system that works on its own. Unfortunately, as ants, sometimes it goes bananas, requiring corrections from external sources. Despite its inaccuracies, it guided spacecraft during historic Apollo missions to the moon and continuous modern space exploration, aiding spacecraft in autonomous navigation. In aviation, for example, INS is frequently coupled with GPS to provide accurate and reliable navigation information. So whatever happens to GPS, there is a backup. It is illegal to jam the GPS signal, and the system is bulletproof after all. GPS has 32 operational satellites and you only need 4 above you for the most accurate location. But if anything happens, we have backups. And if that doesn't help you, you don't be an ant, roll a ball of shit, climb on it and dance. Shit. But don't follow the Milky Way, you will go in circles. Thank you for your time. See you in the next video.